Hello and welcome to today's Python tutorial for beginners. In today's tutorial, we are going to make a very simple yet fun RSS reader. So this is what we are going to make by the end of this video. We are going to use realpython.com and we are going to have the RSS section. Uh, well, we'll see where it, we can find it anyways to get all the news, all the new news and updated news. So we will put them in a title. This is a title. This is a summary of the text, that is of the whole text. And this is the link you can click on and you can go to the link for that page. That is cool. And then you can see all of them are listed like this. So this is what we are going to make today. So let me get rid of this and I'm and my Replit account. So I'm going to use Replit. It's a simple environment, Python environment you can use. Now um, for this to, to work, first of all, we need to know what RSS is. So how do RSS feeds work? RSS is actually stands for uh, really simple syndication. And it refers to files easily read by a computer called XML files that automatically update information. So here, for example, in if you go to realpython.com forward slash feed, actually this method also works for most websites. You can just go forward slash feed. Some websites, well, most websites have that. And you can get to the RSS section and this XML file. So this is an XML file. It looks like an HTML file, but this is not is an XML file and these are the tags used here. And we have these and that look like meta, meta information for, uh, for HTML. But basically this has entries, you can see, let me click on all of them. So that it's all entries here and under each entry, you have a title, you have a link, and you have summary and also content. So we are interested in uh, reading the title and a summary. And if we were interested in learning more, we could click on it and we it gets us or takes us to a page. But how can we do that? So uh, let me show you. We need beautiful soup. I already have two more tutorials on web scraping with beautiful soup, but this is much simpler. So you need to, uh, from BS4, import beautiful, beautiful soup. So you can see it's um, from, if I can manage to, yeah. So beautiful soup uppercase B and uppercase S. So when you press run, it should start actually installing things for you. I've already installed it. So that's one thing. And if you're running it on your own machine, your computer, your desktop, let's say, so you have to pip install a beautiful soup. Okay, uh, what else do I need? I also need to import requests because I'm going to send some requests to, to a URL and get some response back. Okay, this is basically it for now. Now let's start by creating URL and this URL is going to be what actually uh, it's going to request so we are going to request to get a URL and that URL is this URL so so we are sending a request to get this URL and if I print URL now I should get a response code and that response code is 200 so this is an HTTP code it means um, our request response was successful if you get 300 it means it was a redirecting thing or if it's a 400 means there is something wrong so our request response was successful now I have access to this URL now but we are going to make an object. Let's call it soup. You can call it whatever you want. And this is going to use the beautiful soup 
uh, and it takes two parameters. The first one is the content of this URL that we got. So URL dot content. So this comes pre built in um, beautiful soup. So it gets us the content of this URL. And the second argument is going to be the type of the file we're dealing with, which is in our case, XML. So then we should let beautiful soup know that this is going to be an XML file, not an HTML file. But for that, for beautiful soup to be able to parse it, we need to also import another package. We should look for LXML and we should uh, add it. So I've already added this. If you haven't, when you do, it takes some time here to be installed. And now I have access to um, the XML parser for beautiful soup as well. What else do we need? Now, I need to go through the contents of this XML file, all of it. Now I have access to everything in here, the tags, the content, everything. So I'm going to look for entries and I'm going to loop through all the entries one by one. And then in each entry, I'm going to look for the title, look for the link and look for the summary. So let's do that. So I'm going to say entries equals soup dot. I want to find all the entries. So soup dot find all entries. So the, remember this entry refers to this entry here, all these entries. And we're going to find all of them and save them in entries. Now we have access to all the entries. Now we are going to loop through every entry and find title, link and summary. So we can say for, for n, just for entry, or let's just say entry actually, for entry in entries, well, in, so for entry in each of these, what is it going to do? It's going to set the title. Let's create a variable called title. And title is going to be equal to entry, that is the individual entry, dot title. And remember, title is this one here. Now then link, and after that, summary. Okay, so now we have access to title in each entry. Now let's do that with a summary. So that's entry dot summary. <clears throat> and the last one is uh, link equals entry dot link. Okay, now we have access to these, but it gives us back not the text inside them, but also all the tag, like all this, but I don't want all of this. I just want the href or for the title. I don't want this ID here. I just want or I just want the text. I don't want this, uh, these tags here. So in order to get rid of those, we need to set dot text is also something that beautiful soup gives us for summary as well. But for a tags, it doesn't work like that because there is, it's not a text inside it. Actually, this is like an attribute. So we need to, what we need to do is to uh, make it like a, square brackets and look for href and then the href equals what equals this address right so it will give us this back okay cool we have access to these now let's print them so let's print everything inside while we're in, still inside the for loop and let's use f strings and and we use f string because I want to have also these variables inside this. So I, that's why I'm using f strings. Now, the first thing is going to be title. And what is title? It is basically the title variable. So we put them inside curly brackets. And then I need two new lines here after title. And then I start the next one, which is the summary. Summary is going to be also the summary variable. Again, two new lines here and then a link. 
so the link is going to be what link and again two new lines here and maybe something like this for example to separate this section from the others yeah something like that okay now let's uh, run this and let's see what happens okay look at this that was super easy wasn't it so the title for the first news item is reverse Python lists beyond and this is a summary in this step-by-step -step tutorial you learn this and if you want to you can click on the link it will take you to it next one title the real Python podcast the summary and the link and also for others so this is what uh, we just built with a few lines of code it was awesome wasn't it so look at that with almost 13 or 14 lines of code we make this beautiful beautiful rss reader so thank you so much for listening and watching